The second step in our project will be to let the user enter their address into a form. But as part of that, we're going to add a little bit of validation. We'll only let the user go to the third step if their address looks correct. Now we can accomplish this by adding a form to the address view struct we added previously. This will have text fields with four pieces of information required. User's name, street address, city, and zip code. Then we'll add a navigation link to the next screen, which is where the user will see a final price and a checkout button. To make this whole thing easier to follow, we're gonna start making a little checkout view, a small new view, which will be where the address view will push the user to once they press uh, the button to, when they're ready. This is really just there, so we haven't got to worry about adding a placeholder view and then coming back to it later, just to get it out of the way. So, back in Xcode, press Command N, make a new SwiftUI view, and call this Checkout View. This needs to look just like our temporary little address view. We'll say there's an uh, at observed object here that will store an order, our active order then pass it in for the preview. Again, we're gonna come back to that later on. But first, let's actually implement a real address view here. Like I said, this needs to have a form with four text fields here bound to four properties on our order object, plus a navigation link going off to that checkout view we just made, temporary one. So, we'll go back to our order class and add four new properties in here to store delivery details. We'll say at published var name is an empty string. At published var street address is an empty string. At published var city is an empty string. And at published var zip is an empty string. Now we can replace the body property of our address view here with the form and those text fields plus a navigation link. So we'll say there's a form, then a section, and I'll just start the preview going in the meantime, so I have a little think while I'm typing, there we go. Our first section has text fields saying name, bound to the text of $order.name. Then I'll do another text field with street address, text bound to $order.street address. Then text field city, with uh, the text of $order.city and then text field zip with text of $order.zip. That is our initial section. There we go. And below that, our second section with a navigation link inside pointing to our checkout view. And we'll just pass in again the same order we have given to us, the label being uh, text of, come on Hudson, text of Check out, there we go. And now we'll add a couple of modifiers to our form saying there's a nav title of delivery details and a nav bar display mode of dot in line. We are now one level deep into our UI. So we want to have an inline display mode now. If you want to add a little uh, navigation view in your preview just to see how it looks, please do. Don't add it to the main form. Right? Don't add it into the main body up here because that will be presented from inside a uh, nav view already from the previous screen. But for previewing purposes, so you can see it there, you can do that. So now you can get an idea of our structure. Our content view makes the order, pass into address view, which passes into checkout view. It's passed all the way through all three of our views point at the same piece of data. Now go ahead and run your code again. Let's see how it looks. Uh, obviously, order some data and a, a vanilla or cupcakes or special request, whatever you want to. When you're ready, go to delivery details and hit here, and we get an idea of how our screen works. You can enter a name and an address and a city and a zip code and so forth. Um, this is nice. I'll say my name is obviously Paul. My address is, uh, I'm not going to say, 555 Taylor Swift Avenue, uh, Nashville. What would a Tennessee zip B. I have no idea. I don't actually know. One, 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 one. There we go. So that's my stuff. I can go back to the first screen and then go back to delivery details again and look, all the data I entered, my obviously very real address, 
is still here. It's still there no matter what screen you're on. <clears throat> you're on. And yes, this is a natural side effect of using a class for our data, but it's an instant feature on our app. Right? We haven't do any work for this. If we use a struct here or local at state properties, then any address details that entered here will disappear if we move back to the original screen, which you might want sometime. It'd be very annoying. Oh, no, I've got to add another cupcake or whatever. Bang, you lose it all. This way, you don't. It always stays there. Now, if you really wanted to have a struct here, you could do that. Just have the same class structure we had in Project 7, whatever works. But keep your options open when you're thinking about them, okay? Anyway, now that address view works, it's time to stop the user progressing to the checkout unless some condition is satisfied. So we're ready. What condition? It's down to us, right? We could write length checks for each of our pieces of text, right? That often trips people up though. You know, people say, uh, oh, your name is too short. is really insulting if you genuinely have a name that's only four or five letters in total. Don't make assumptions about people's names, please, or their address or who knows what. If you try and add length validation, you are likely to exclude people, so please don't. What we are gonna do is at least say, name, street address, city, and zip, must not be empty. You must put something in there, that's okay. Um, and we can do that here. Now, I prefer, personally, to put these kinds of validation checks inside my data, not inside my views. So my data knows, yes, I'm a valid order. That's the way I prefer to think about it. You could do it either way, but I prefer that kind of thing in my data. So I'll say in order.swift here, there is a new computed property called has valid address, which is a bool. Inside here, I'll say if name is empty or street address is empty or city is empty or zip is empty, then return false. This is not a valid address. We're still here, return true. The address is good. And we can now use this condition here, this little property, in conjunction with SwiftUI's disabled modifier, and we'll get the ability to, to gray out part of our form. We can literally attach disabled to any view with a condition to check, of course. And that view will stop responding to any user interactions if the condition is true. In our case, we want disabled to check the property we just wrote, has valid address. Because if that's false, it means the form section contained the button check out, the navigation link, ought to be disabled. We are not safe to check out here because the user must fill in delivery details to continue. So we don't want to do it as a whole form, just the second section, because otherwise we would never type anything in. Second section, disabled when order has valid address is equal to false, like that. And now, if you run the app again, you should see that all four address fields must have at least one character in, in order for this button here to work. I, I cannot press this here. I'll say name is A, street address is B, city C, zip one, and bang, it lights up straight away. This button is good to go. Even better, as you saw, when it loses data, SwiftUI just grays it out. So it becomes really, really clear when uh, it's interactive, when it's useful, and when you can, can continue. 